The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father and I are one. The Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, just an editor's note from yesterday, uh, St. Catherine of Siena was the last of 25 children, and I didn't mean to cut off the last 10. Um, she was a twin, and she was the 25th, and the twin did not survive much after childbirth, but she did die at 33. But nonetheless, her legacy even the brighter. Given the gift of mysticism that the Lord blessed upon her, and if you'd like to emulate her and have 25 kids, just get in line. <clears throat> uh, it's a hard thing to grasp and probably a harder thing to um, put into practice. But it is important to say and understand that the resurrection of Jesus is an act of living way of life. Obviously, it's a faith. It's a spiritual reality. But it has immediate temporal implications. We tend to live very immediately in the temporal, the physical, what's in front of us, what we have to do next, what we have for lunch, what we want to have for dinner. The temporal things are constantly impinging upon us. But as people of faith, we need to kind of put a little higher on the awareness list of priorities that resurrection is a living reality. Most of us don't wake up every day and say, well, yeah, yeah, one of these days I'm going to be in heaven. What? One of these days we're going to be in heaven. Redemption is the same. Redemption is not just a moment in time, the moment Jesus died on the cross, the moment he rose from the dead, or the moment you die, they close the lid, as I say, and you find yourself in heaven. Redemption is also a living reality that's happening interactively as we engage through faith in our life, love, prayer with God and our relationship, love, and care for one another. I'd invite you to consider and think about that. I know you know that. I know you believe that. But somehow, how do we help that to become more immediate in our awareness as we walk through the joys and the blessings as well as the challenges and the trials of our daily life. There's so much around us and thank God for the present age. Who wants to give up their iPhone? Raise your hand. Who wants to give up their computer? Nobody. But at the same time, this immediate reality of constant news, most of, us bad, most of it bad, we forget there's infinitely more goodness and beauty and light and compassion and mercy and love going on in the world every day. But what hits the news is all the wrong and bad and disordered and, unfortunately, the evil things that happen. We're already redeemed and our resurrection is already assured in Christ. The theme presents itself clearly in this act of the apostles where Paul is nearly stoned to death. Was he dead and raised? Doesn't say that. 
They took him for dead, supposing he was dead. You can only presume, and I do, that the disciples gathered around him, I'm sure they prayed, and he was revived. He's almost dead, but the next day he travels to another city and he keeps preaching the same message. That's a little beyond the normative, temporal, physical reality that we all experience, is it not? There's a movement, there's an action, there's a spiritual reality going on there as we know through the life of the Holy Spirit. Is it actively normative? Probably not. But does it happen? Absolutely. Should we anticipate it? Yes, we should. Should we just sit around expecting it? Is it going to just fall from the heavens because we think it's going to happen? No. We can only hope to consider <clears throat> the faith and the zeal that Paul had in his faith in Christ. Now, we're not all Paul, and we did not have the experience Paul had falling to the ground in that light of the Lord's presence. But so convinced was he that he gave every ounce of his strength through many trials and persecutions and continued to preach the word. The apostle, and, and Paul really never knew Jesus in his temporal life. He experienced Jesus after the Lord died and rose again. Now, these disciples of Jesus, who lived with him for up to, say, three years, they knew him, they touched him, they had food with him, and they lived life together in some form for that period of time. Again, it's a spiritual reality that should find its way into our temporal interaction and physicality of, of our humanity. Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give you. It's too simple to say, well, well, that doesn't work. I mean, look at the world. Yeah, look at the world. People say it's my favorite phrase. Okay, but God is all over this mess like white on rice. And he is. Does that mean it's okay that we have all the war and oppression? Of course not. But it is part of our work and our role as baptized Christians, proclaimers of Christ, to do what we can as we are able to resolve these things. And if all we can do is pray, then that's what we do. If we offer donations, if we become activists, or we, in fact, put ourselves physically in a place where we're helping that such war and oppression, poverty, etc., is relieved, all the better. Consider St. Paul again the peace he must have perceived in Christ. He kept going no matter what. Beat up, stoned, shipwrecked, flogged, put in prison. He just kept going. Not as the world gives do I give. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. I understand, and I know you do, we're not supposed to think about our death every day, and we shouldn't worry about our death. Most people, I don't think, think about what it's going to be like when they get to heaven. We just don't typically think that way. Do not be afraid, and do not let your hearts be troubled. Somehow, again, a spiritual reality, how do we put that in place? when we get up in the morning knowing we have a difficult day ahead of us or we have an open calendar. I used to love those days. And you never know what's going to happen. And something you never expected does. Sometimes it's nice and sometimes it isn't. But there's spiritual realities that are supposed to translate into the temporal, physical reality that we live in because they're one and the same reality. It's expressed in the incarnation. God became flesh, physical, in temporal reality of the time and space that we know. The redemption that is ours is here, and the resurrection we're called to is also here now. Ponder it. 
Love gives life. We all know love. We've all been given love. We all need and want love. And we can all give love. In love, life is given, lifted up, and blessed. Let's work on that. Let's not be afraid, trying to bear with patience the trials that are ours, doing all we can, simple or great, maybe just a prayer, maybe just one Hail Mary, for the problems that most bother, most bother you, for the poor, the hungry, the starving, the war-torn, the oppressed, etc. It's in God's hands. Believe, pray, trust.